Welcome back. You're watching World Inside with me, Tian Wei. Now let's go to Straight Talk. Yes, that's both the name and the style of our exclusive interview series featuring big names coming from all walks of life in China. A person, a talk, a day during the ongoing political season. Today, let's meet Li Daohui, one of the best known Chinese economists in the world. He articulated the recent trade tensions between China and the U.S. He also spoke frankly to me about the nature of China's challenges in carrying out the latest reforms. But he said that no one could ever halt the tide of reform because that's what the Chinese really see eye to eye on. Let's do some reality check first and listen to what he has to say. We need great steel makers, great aluminum makers for defense. U.S. President Donald Trump has long promised trade tariffs and is now moving to impose them. A 25% global tariff or tax on imports of steel and 10% on aluminum. Allies and neighbors of the U.S. will be hit the hardest. China isn't among the top 10. It's 11th. But Chinese products like aluminum foil imports have already been targeted. And the Trump White House is indicating more moves against Beijing on investment, intellectual property and technology transfers. The U.S. is also moving to block more foreign investment in the U.S. At this week's National People's Congress in Beijing, Premier Li Keqiang said Beijing was committed to open trade but would also defend itself. And after U.S. President Trump's state visit plus last November, China committed itself to further opening up its financial and insurance industries. But the problem for China and other big trading partners with the U.S. is that the Trump administration may not be satisfied with just imposing tariffs. China-U.S. trade war, is it a possibility? It's not a war, it's a battle. The Chinese side will and should retaliate in a very precise way to let the U.S. President Trump know that China is not ready to accept whatever bully the U.S. side is giving. But Professor, when you look at the history of economic discussions, or sometimes debates and probably run into wars, if we could use that word, um, in history, does it help anyone? One country, especially a large one like the U.S., uh, initiates a big, big uh, trade war the whole world will suffer. Mm. The Great Recession before World War II started exactly uh, by the U.S. congressman's uh, unilateral trade policy against European countries. Mm. And that triggered a trade war, which triggered financial crisis, which triggered a big re recession, which triggered later on the World War II. China is talking about reducing the financial risks for the next three years. That's going to be one of the most important battles China is going to fight within the country in order to guarantee a good life for its people. But what if the international environment is getting ever more harsh? For example, trade. What does that mean for China? Well, uh, the f trade and the finance for China uh, so far have been relatively isolated mm. because in China, trade uh, is a big source of uh, surplus, of inflow of foreign currency, but the, f the amount of inflow of foreign currency is decreasingly unimportant, mm -hmm. not nearly as important as before. It used to be that China earns around, um, around something around three, four hundred billion U.S. dollars a year from trade surplus. Nowadays, that number reduces to something around 200 or even 150. Now, don't forget the Chinese economy is getting bigger and bigger. Last year, the Chinese GDP reached uh, the, the, uh, the amount of uh, 12 trillion U.S. dollars mm -hmm. in comparison with the U.S. 19 trillion, 19 trillion. So, relatively speaking, trade is less important today for the Chinese economy as it was 10 years ago. Compared to the United States, China is still going to be the bigger loser because China is still having this export-oriented, to a certain extent, uh, economic model. Uh, to some extent, that's true. Nobody is a winner when there's a trade war. China today is much less vulnerable 
than 10 years ago to trade war. Mm. And also, mm. I don't think China is initiating a trade war. Rather, to the contrary, I believe the Chinese government will come out telling the European Union, telling the, U, the U.S. Uh, 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 companies that China is willing to stand up against the President mm. Trump's policies of trade war. China will become a, a kind of um, a pillar, a pillar of today's global uh, governance in today's uh, uh, strong wave. Whether the International Business Community is still willing to stand by China's side, for example, as they did years ago when there was another debate about trade. Uh, for now, there has been complaints coming from the international trading community about uh, whether China is continuing to commit to the opening up policy. Of course, Chinese policy officially it is, but when it comes to specific regulation, there seems to be concerns. Secondly, we heard from the spokesperson from the National People's Congress talking about three foreign investment laws and regulations likely to be combined into one basic one. So nobody knows where the water is going to flow at this point, according to the foreign investors coming into China. So do you think there's going to be still a big team of sympathizers towards China if there is further debate about trade? Local Chinese firms are much more competitive against foreign companies. So as a result, foreign companies are complaining about China, not necessarily about the policy, but about the old market. It's not as easy today as before making money in China. Let's face, let's face it. And also, multinationals, whether they are complaining against Chinese policy or not, are still on the same side of China. Of, of China. China, as I said, is trying to prevent the current policy from the U.S. Uh, from escalating into a trade war. So in this regard, the Chinese policy, the Chinese government and the multinationals are on the same boat. Reform and opening up, that's what China has been doing over the past 40 years. That's also why China has become what it is today. But going forward, will the country still have the guts to press ahead with the reform agenda with unwavering resolve and precision? I asked Professor Li Daokui about that too with a direct question. There has been different views about reforms. Mm -hmm. Some say it's not necessarily in the speed to the satisfaction of most. Others say, well, there has to be a steady growth of these policies and steady implementations of these policies. What do you think, Professor? Let's compare China's reform to the construction of a building. Mm -hmm. Right after 40 years of construction, this building is already pretty much having taken its shape. However, the internal decoration that re now requires very detailed work, painstaking details, are now the task of reforms. So therefore, the reforms today seem to be slower mm. than it was 40 years ago or 30 years ago, because the nature of the progress of the construction of this house, of the modern economy in China. So I wouldn't necessarily say that China is lacking commitment to reform or reform slows down. Rather, every piece of reform in mm. China today involves more thinking, more debates, more deliberation, more research mm. than before. The so-called deep water. Exactly. And I call it detailed painting. And after the 19th uh, Party Congress, mm -hmm. and also after this upcoming National People's Congress, reform will speed up because, because the basic personnel decisions mm -hmm. will be settled. For the next five years. For the next five years. And these per all these personnel decisions more or less are in line with the ideas of uh, the top leadership in China. Mm. What do you mean by that from an economic uh, scholar's perspective? In economic terms, I do believe that the reform in, financi in the financial sector will speak, up, will speak up. For example, the structure of financial regulation right. will be uh, consolidated. Even though I do not know the details, but I'm pretty comfortable in predicting that, that the 
regu regulatory structure mm. will be consolidated, will be streamlined, will be strengthened, mm. right? Because the Chinese financial sector is now very multidimensional. One enterprise actually is doing many, many things. That's right. The financial firms are doing multiple things. We right. call universal banking, whereas the regulators are still very specialized. There's a mismatch. Mm. When you look at China's structure, at least the governance structure, local central government relations is still one of the most important. Earlier, Professor, you know better than I do, we learned the news that some of the local numbers when it comes to GDP have been cooked for years, and therefore people put a question mark about China's exact growth rate. What about the picture now with the starting point, as we say, in a new era, are things really likely to be that different? Local enterprises are now given different sets of incentives. Before, they were pretty much um, simply motivated to, to have GDP, to, to have economic growth, to have faster GDP growth. Mm. Now, they are given a multi-task, multi-dimensional task. Multi task. Uh, not only economic growth, uh, but more important, the, li the increase in living standard, mm -hmm. the improvement of the environment, and uh, R&D, uh, so on and so forth. So I do believe that the local leaders are now very different. Mm -hmm. I've been traveling around in China I've s in recent months. Mm -hmm. I've seen tremendous change, tremendous change in the mentality of local officials. Give me an example, Professor. For example, I just came from a big, big uh, city in the province of Shandong mm -hmm. with a population almost 10 million. 10 million, okay? It's not the capital of Shandong, but it's one of the largest cities in Shandong. Right. And the mayor uh, who invited me to go there, mm -hmm. he uh, spends lots of energy and his uh, time to one topic. He's been also asking me about this topic, how to change the engine mm -hmm. of economic growth from simply making investments mm. in infrastructure to... Or real estate, to, to say the least. <laughs> to sustainable investments to prop up the local R&D. Mm. And also, he says, educated population. Therefore, the industry in a city will be able to upgrade. Mm. There has been concern whether countries, including China and others, there will be rise of nationalism. So when you have pressure coming from outside, it's predictable nationalism would arise in a country. So how would that work eventually on the economic policies and on the way of reform? It's an interesting question, isn't it? If you look countries after countries in today's world, starting from the US, right, President Trump, don't you see that as nationalism? US first, America first, right? As simple as that. But that has not been well received by the rest of the world, by the sure, way, but Professor. Domestically, domestic, the, the president elected by the U.S. population, right, by the U.S. voters, is in, inward-looking, nationalistic. Mm. The nationalism is the trend of today's world. The Chinese government, including Chinese, you know, represented by Chinese leaders, right, are always, always trying to balance nationalism with a global commitment, mm -hmm. right? When, when President Xi Jinping says the China dream, he also says the common destiny. Mm. The community of shared future for all. Exactly. He always has double two messages. The two messages are combined. Mm -hmm. That is, how to make China great again. It's through China being able to make more contribution to the rest of the world unlike the past 500 years. In the past, past 500 years, not only China slowed down as a country in making progress, but also China slowed down as a country making contribution to the rest of the world. Mm. So today's message from China, I think, is super clear. It is super clear. It is about reform, isn't it? When it comes to reform, Professor Li is a product of the practice of his own and has a story to tell once asked about it. Take a listen as to what he has to say. You are one of those products in a way, quote unquote. That is 40 years of reform and China's opening up, right? You were a Chinese student and then you went overseas. You studied there in the United States, became a professor, worked there, comfortable life, but then you thought there's something better and bigger to be done and you came back. 
you t teach at Tsinghua University, you try to establish the first ever institution on the Chinese university campus between Chinese and foreign, uh, in a way, joint efforts. So you knew how it was like to be someone coming from outside, coming back, and also to be a reformer in this process. The big takeaway from this 40-year anniversary of the reform is very, very simple. That is, continue the process and let the process not only benefit the Chinese people, but also the rest of the world. But you yourself, Professor Li, is a reformer too. I'm a big, big supporter of reform. Mm. And you did your own projects too. I Whether it is project. your center of research or it's establishing an institute on the campus of Tsinghua. Reform is a mentality. Truly, reform is a mentality. Every day, in everything, I have to implement reform. For example, I've been teaching a course for 14 years, an undergraduate course. Every year, I have to innovate. And I told students, if I don't innovate, if I don't do reform, somebody will, who is much more eloquent, much more knowledgeable, much more much better looking than myself. <laughs> well, do I'm a not video sure whether that is the we'll standard we're talking about here. We'll do a video, we'll do, a, you know, video, we'll do the internet learning. No, who am I? I will, I will be replaced. So that's why in my teaching, especially recent years, I always, always do reform. So in my current teaching, I reverse it. I let students first, first present the teaching material. Mm -hmm. I give them PPT beforehand, and that make comments. That way, I believe I cannot be easily replaced. <laughs> so this is an example of reform. Not reform by artificial intelligence. Exactly, reform is <laughs> mentality. I do believe that the, the reform as mentality is deeply, deeply rooted in China. But you also know the challenge of being a reformer. Of course. Because of course. you try to set up an institute on Tsinghua University campus, and it takes years. Yeah. And of course, you always encounter with challenges that could be part of the fun, you could argue, yeah. but at the same time, it is challenging. It's challenging because, number one, you have to be patient. Number two, you really, really, really have to think from the other people's perspective. You have to make sure potential losers are properly taken care of. Right? You can imagine, you might be a loser of, the, of any reform any process. Any reform. Right? You, you, feel, you feel very uncomfortable. So any successful reform uh, has to, right, has to overcome the uh, obstacles from the, from the potential losers. And I, my belief is not to wipe them out. But Rather, they have, you have to find a way to make them comfortable. But is the baggage too heavy? Well, reform that by definition is that we have a bigger pie. We have a bigger pie. We have a bigger, right, bigger economy, more efficiency. So we're, we should be able to afford to compensate the potential loser. Maybe it's a better word. Potential, potential. Uh, uh, Those interests are people, being right? challenged. That's mm. right. Mm. But how patient can you be? Do well, you need to be as a reformer? In China, we have a saying that. Uh, 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 being slow is not a problem. The problem is to stop, right? If you keep on moving, keep on, keep on moving, you eventually will get there. Some example in Beijing traffic. If in Beijing traffic in a crossroad, if you stop, you never go cross because it's so busy. There, there, are, there, are, there are bicycles, there are uh, passengers, there are right, pedestrians. They, they're always cutting our way, right? So what you do in Beijing's crossroads, if you, you have to gradually move, 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 right? Then people would yield to you. All right. You if you run too fast, you, you run too fast, you have accident. If you stand still, you never come across. Well, you ride a wonderful motorcycle in Beijing, so I would believe <laughs> you <laughs> what That's you right. have just said. Yeah. Looking ahead, it's not going to be easy, to say the least, Professor. And China will be in the water that it has never been before. So. What kind of mes mindset, Professor, do you think, whether it's the leadership or the common folks, academics in China, from your perspective, need to have? Number one. And hold it dear. Number one, a sense of uh, urgency, a, a sense of um, um, 
uh, crisis may be too strong a word. Mm. A sense of needs uh, of continued reform. Mm -hmm. right? That's very, very important. Number two, be global. Always keep in mind that China is big enough, huge enough, so anything Chinese essentially is global. Mm -hmm. So we also have to take foreigners or people in the rest of the world's interest into account. Mm. We have to understand their mentality, we have to understand their interest. Mm. And fundamentally, I believe that China's growth, China's continued progress will also benefit the rest of the world. Professor Li, it's always a great pleasure having you on our program. All the best as a reformer. My <laughs> honor, my pleasure. Thank you so Thank much, you. Professor. Thank you. Professor Li Daokui, one well-known Chinese economist in the world. He's part of our interview series, Straight Talk, right here on World Insight with Tianwei during the two sessions. Tomorrow, we are going to hear from Zhang Qiyue, China's Consul General in New York, on fresh efforts of China's diplomacy in the making. Well, that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us World Inside CGTN into your search engine or check out our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Sina Weibo. From me, Tian Wei, and everyone on the World Inside team, thanks for watching. And tune in again tomorrow for insights across China and around the world. Good night.